Yeah, I see a lot of Pedernales points made from bifaces that look like this. This is way too large. All right, so here we go. One more shot. Yeah, this is going to be much more straightforward. Maybe not easier, but more straightforward because the shape is really nice. Okay. Yeah, switch over to aluminum. I could, let's see. So it's not as harsh. So I don't snap off one of the ears again. Yeah, it might not be a bad idea. Steel is very, very aggressive. You need that aggressiveness though when you when you're having a steppy, steppy day. Uh, let's see. It didn't seem to make a difference, did it? Only when it's, when you hit directly on the face of those steps, it does make a difference if you're using steel. All right. Give the aluminum one more chance. I don't know if you guys like seeing the raw stone better or the glass and obsidian st stuff. So if you're, you can mention it in the comments whether you like seeing the, the more delicate materials being worked or the really tough stuff being worked. I just do everything, man. <laughs> I can hear that too. Yeah, I just don't have time to do everything, everything. I didn't feel like working glass right now because it's a real hassle to clean up. I think a lot of indirect percussion was used on Pedernales points of some sort, some sort of indirect percussion. Did they hold it behind the knee? Probably not, because they could just get someone else to hold it like that. Just sit there and hold it like the apprentice. The apprentice holds the uh, flaker and watches how you do it for a year or so before it actually touches a piece of stone. How's that? Yeah, it'd be much, I'd be much happier if someone was holding it. That way they could put some pressure behind it if I needed to. You know, they would hold it there and I'd say, okay, load it up a little bit. They could do it. Uh, they could also switch faster between tools than I can. Uh, give me, give me the other one over there and get, you know, keep it more organized. If there's two people working on, on the single point, you got two brains. You can kind of divide the tasks. I always just throw tools over on the side and then I go look for them later. If I'm if I'm in the zone and I'm not really paying attention to where I toss the tool. So I think uh, if they did use the horizontal flaker like this, it's a two-man operation, I think, and many if not most cases so 
So yeah, I think the horizontal flaker was used, but probably not in the way that I'm doing it because I'm a one-man show. Most snappers are one-man shows. But I don't know if that's throughout history, though. That's just modern. Because, you know, it's a pretty obscure skill. No one really needs it these days. For survival. Not like they used to need it. They used to need it quite often. Back in the day. So potentially lots of people were involved in it. Although I'm seeing... A lot of evidence that there wasn't really that many nappers because a lot of the points tend to look the same and I'm starting to th I'm starting to, to realize why these ears aren't the same same length across because uh, it's very difficult to preserve them when you're hitting extremely hard to get to, to uh, make enough uh, dent, so to speak, in the stone. Same thing with notching raw stone. So aluminum looks like you're not really helping me very much. The same issues that I have with notching, right? Like everybody. Notching the raw stuff, you blow out the sides because you have to apply extreme amount of force to get the notching to work. Same with this. Now, is that an argument against using raw? stone for this type of point yes I think so you know you want to think the Indians made miracles with this stuff because then it makes your personal finds all that much more special and you find one of these and you go oh that's cool look at the skill level and then the guy behind you or next to you says yeah and I bet it's raw too Oh yeah, probably so. It makes it even more special. So yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know about these being raw in most cases. Uh, you're just annoying with all that stuff. Okay, yeah, I know. I'm annoying with my opinions. I was just having a discussion with my boys too, and they, if they hit on a nerve, I tend to, I tend to rant, right? I don't know if they know my, my sensitive topics or what I think they do let's see if dad's still sensitive about this particular topic sure enough I'm still sensitive funny how that works huh and then they giggle yep laugh it up laugh it up that's what I say laugh it up while you can I don't feel like laughing about that. Okay. I don't got much chance to, to uh, fix it. Let's see. If I mess it up, that's it. The whole video is going to be shot, right? It's already over an hour. 
it's not going to be that pretty of a point. And it's probably going to get uglier. I'm going to leave the ears lopsided. Just like the real ones. But this time I'll be more careful about taking off the big flakes. Not be so casual like I, I can be with the raw with the heat treated stuff. Yeah, that's not good. All right. All that pressure and all that force, it's got to go somewhere. If you're trying to make delicate ears and barbs, you know where it goes. Path of least resistance. They probably didn't make it this way either. They probably started with something a lot wider. <clears throat> I drink some water. My voice is starting to go. The the preforms for pedernalis are wider than this, right? So you're not dealing with really delicate barbs. What we'll deal with them for the video. Would it look cosmetically better if I used abo or used um, natural tools? Would it look cosmetically better? I don't know, you think crushing is better cosmetically? I crush a lot of stuff when I use antler on this raw stuff. It does grab the edge very well, but then I start getting spoiled and then I don't a braid enough or whatever and I start crushing it. Show us, show us what you mean. Nope, I'm not going to show you because I'm in the zone right now with this copper and I don't want to mess it up. It's going to be lopsided. Lopsider or Alice. That's a point type. Really? No. <laughs> yeah. I like saying stuff and then someone goes, really? And I say, no. <laughs> Not like that last thing. That last thing was just silly, but yeah, I like... I like playing that joke on people. Okay, so I regularize the edge a little bit better. I think I know where my next strikes are going to be. I think I had to change the angle on that lamp. See the flake scars better. Yeah, translucency a little bit better. Is that better? I don't know, can't tell. All right. Does the grit of the abrader matter? I suppose it does, yeah. If you get used to a certain grit and you change it, it's going to mess you up. That's about all I can think of. Does it make a difference on how to prepare the platforms? I don't know. Just 
it takes longer to grind it, but it also is more gentle on the edge. The other big abrader I have is not gentle at all, so the potential of removing unwanted flakes is there with a less gentle abrader. That's, you don't want un unwanted flakes, obviously. Yeah, I'm trying to get in the zone, so I'm not talking very much. I was thinking about something else today about uh, determinism. You know, cause and effect and all that. Uh, in the context of flint napping, I often say that I let my subconscious take control. There are some in the philosophy world that says, uh, well, I'm not actually in control at any time because it's my subconscious that's doing everything. Subconscious making the decisions and you're just watching. The conscious mind is just a, along for the ride. There's nothing there. You're not you're not in control unless you're in conscious control. If you let your subconscious do the work, you're not in control really. It's deterministic. And the more your subconscious is in control, the more deterministic it is. I think it's just the opposite. The exact opposite. I think it's the exact opposite of that. 
where the subconscious is actually allowing you the freedom to express your skill without interference by trying to control it consciously. I think control actually interferes. Control is interference. When you're first learning, you have to try to control all the variables, right? Or as many as you can, anyway. Until you develop a subconscious type muscle memory, or whatever they call it. And you let your subconscious take over. That's when the real flit napping takes place. The brain is a wonderful thing. It allows you to... It allows you to be free to think of the overall design and other things while the mundane tasks can be almost automated through your subconscious. But you're allowing, your, your consciousness is allowing your subconscious to do the work. There's, a, there's an arbiter there, something... Uh, arbitrating what's what's actually doing the work if your subconscious is if you're awake and you're allowing the subconscious to do the work your subconscious isn't doing everything it isn't making the decision for it to work or do the work Conscious mind makes a decision for the subconscious to do the work or not. The conscious mind can interfere. Yeah, but that interference... Hey. hey. Kevin. You got... I pulled a, I pulled a um, foxtail grass seed out of his eye the other day. So I'm afraid he might get another one in there. I had to look it up. I didn't know what they were called, but they're called foxtails. Anyway. Flit napping is definitely not deterministic. In my view. Humans are not deterministic. Inanimate objects are deterministic. So does it, I guess that makes me a compatibilist, where they both can exist. Life forms, I don't think, are deterministic, unless they have absolutely no... no stimulus, or no input from the outside world. They, they work only on, func only on function. And if they... If their function doesn't match their environment, they die, right? So there's no real autonomy there. But if uh, the organism has enough awareness, it's not going to be deterministic. There's going to be some choices in there. Anyway, and if there is a choice, you can't say, well, there's a choice beforehand, but no choice afterwards, because the choice you make, you would have made no matter what. Well, in the span of time, there can't be a choice and then a, a no choice at all at the same time. can't be both a choice and no choice that's a contradiction I may be simplifying it too much but basically yeah I don't think I don't think that's a good reasoning for determinism that uh, 
Yeah, you had a choice beforehand, but no choice afterwards. Doesn't make sense. Might just have to leave that step in there. Leave a couple of these steps in there just so I can shorten the video. Is it because I wasn't paying attention? It might have been because I wasn't paying attention. I could have strategized that bit better. Maybe, maybe not gone to the Aluminum, I don't know. I'm gonna risk blowing off that ear or that barb. Let's see if I, uh, I won't be able to send a flake up there now. I don't think so. Oh well. Went through that pretty fast. The uh, determinism stuff. I think I'm going to make another channel on philosophy. I think I've said that already. But then, what do you talk about during your videos? I can't talk about weird stuff. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I get tired of talking about flint napping. Gosh, I'm already getting tired of this particular piece. I really hate wrestling with it. Don't like a challenge like this. Challenges like this are just nerve wracking. But I, I chose the stone, I chose what I wanted to do. Yep. Sometimes I just want to remember how miserable it can be, I guess. I miss the miserableness. Right? Right. No, not really. Well, it just shows that your technique is not good, huh? Well, maybe maybe it does. Maybe it shows you that my technique is not that good. You got a better one, yeah. All right, then. Your technique is better than mine. You win. <laughs> well, if my technique's better than yours, you better get off the internet. Yep, that's where it's going. You might get your wish. Oops. All right. See if I can finish this up. 
on the next segment. How do I get rid of that step fracture? The answer is I don't. Well, you should. Yeah, I probably should, but I'm not going to. Has a, that kind of reminded me of freeze crack right there for a second. I watch almost everybody's videos. I say almost everybody. Because uh, some people have techniques that don't change over time. You know, it's the same old, same old. So I, I don't watch all their videos. Where's my other pad? Yeah, some guys, same technique, same material, same. A lot of the things that are always the same. I have been watching some fog nappers, though, and that, talking about the same. So there's that. So, might be contradicting myself. I hope you can hear me because I've been, oh, I've been. Talking loud sometimes, talking softly sometimes, I'm not even paying attention. I'm trying to think how these notches were done or how they look like they were done. It looks like some of these notches on some of the Pedernalis were done with. Uh, percussion work but I'm going to assume not I'm going to assume that they were pre uh, finished off with pressure and of course I don't have a, a punch notcher or a flaker indirect flaker for the small enough for these What am I going to do with that step? Well, let's see. I'm going to try to get close to it. You know, I can try to get closer to that step fracture and, and uh, try to send in one more flake. Gotta say the uh, this this does have a, a, a certain look to it when you pressure flake it in a raw state, and I don't see very many of the artifacts with this particular look to them. You know, when you pressure flake something really rough, you get kind of a smooth surface. You don't see the flex cars very well. That's not the case with a lot of my artifacts, or, or most of them. You see definite flex cars, very pronounced flex cars, almost all of them. feeling how sharp the edges are they don't feel as grippy as this you know raw stone feels really really grippy it, it does hold an edge extremely well and it's very grippy 
Now you can see that it's the age of the stone that makes a difference in how it feels. Yeah, maybe so. Well, maybe, but maybe not. I don't know, should I, if I take too much of that off to get to that step fracture, it's going to look odd. Oh well. Guess what? Too late. All right. I'm actually not close enough to that step fracture, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Weaken it enough for me to try again? Yeah, perhaps. Maybe so. Hit right next to it. Might be able to trim the rest of it off. Close enough. Okay, come on. I've gone through this much of the stone. I've got the feel for it. And now you're not going to flake like you flaked before. Really? All right, I'll finish out with pressure because I'm pushing my luck. I'm going to put kind of a needle tip on it. And sharpen the edge as best I can. Without crushing it too much. And the question is looming, would this work good with antler or not? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Let's see what I can do. I got a phone call, but I'm not going to answer it. All right, let's see how this antler does on this finish work. See if the learning curve is really bad or if it's not too bad. Or 
the tool is sufficient to do the work. It's been dry and it's been hot. It's not uh, humid at all and it's eating up my tool. For the amount of pressure I need to put on here. Yeah, I mean the antler works okay but if I had to do 10 of these points I think you can see where this is going. Can you see it? Can't even see, right? How many minutes has that been? I think that lamp is not still not cooperating. Some guys, I guess they don't have this problem where the, the stone eats up their tool, right? I don't know where you're getting your antler from. It eats up my tools like crazy. I can get the same kind of flakes, yeah. Comes at a high price. Does it eat up the tools this much with heat treat? Funny you should ask. No, it does not. Not even close. Again, you just don't know how to do it, man. You're just not good at this. Or you're just not good at, good at uh, pretending you have rust, hard to work raw stone. Shouldn't be using the real hard to work raw stone. Should be using the easier stuff and saying it's hard. <laughs> ah. So there you go. The wonders of antler. Pulled that barb right off. And yes, I'm going to blame the antler. Because I wouldn't have done that with the copper. Or the heat treat. That was totally unexpected. I didn't think it was going to come off that easy. But it gives me a chance. Let's see. Yeah, I got time. It gives me a chance to send another flake in there. So what if the barbs are going to be uneven? I'm going to send another, another flake to see if I can power through that step fracture, get rid of it. Almost. Holy moly. How frustrating is that? Gosh, I might have one more chance at it. Should I do it? Sure. I 
could try to send the flake in that way. Oh, I'll just leave it. It looks okay anyway. I mean, it was thick on some of these pedernalis points right there at that junction of the stem and the blade. Of course, you had to create the haft a little bit different than this. It's going to have to be more V-shaped at the top and uh, contoured to fit this concavity at the bottom. Yeah, I'll get into that someday, I suppose. Anyway, let's see. So back in the day, would I retire this as a projectile point? Heck no. You can still shoot it. Do the barbs actually mean something? Yeah, it causes more bleeding. Yep, yep. Uh, barbs are not allowed these days because it's inhumane, or so they say. Definitely looks like it would cause a lot more pain. Which does slow the animal down if you're tracking it. Anyway, okay, I'll just leave it that, at that. The series, this particular series has already run over an hour and a half, maybe... Two hours so yeah that hurt getting uh, losing that barb but it was just my inexperience with the antler but it, it ate through my antler tip pretty good and I had to keep dressing it because I know there's pieces of shirt in there Yeah, it's, it came out all right. A little bit of lump near the tip. I don't recall seeing too much of that in the artifacts. Let's see if I can get rid of some of that, and then it'll be, I'll call it good. My pad is coming apart. All right, but I have new ones. Thanks to my friend Sean. All right, here we go. I'm trying to get rid of one last lump without breaking the tip off. Good enough. Right, right. I see a few nasty dull spots. Does this look like an artifact edge to me? Uh, yeah, I've seen some that look similar to this. But in general, no. And I've never really uh, tried to replicate edges very much. Uh, one, because I don't want to 
make something that looks too real. And number two, I'm, I'm not, I don't use these as tools. But I, I should do it just so I could teach it. Okay. All right, that's good enough. I would say that was fun, but it wasn't. <laughs> Okay, I am getting soft in my old age. It would be fun shooting at, the, at something with this. Yep, I can see that. I could also see it as a knife. But definitely, I could see that as a projectile point. Maybe a little bit thicker hafting material. I don't know where my other stuff is. Okay, anyway. Alright, that's it. Good enough.